and we've just recently done a Great Christian Revivals DVD of three of the great British revivals ever uh, with John Wesley, uh, Evan Roberts and uh, Duncan Campbell. The Welsh Revival of 1904 and I think we've got some footage that you've uh, prepared and brought along for us. We'll leave our mics up and uh, hopefully as it's played we can just comment on it and, and listen to it. So what are we looking at there? This is the, the chapel in uh, Lucker, Moriah Chapel in Lucker, which is in South Wales. So the small building on the left, that's where the revival actually broke out. 31st of October, 1904. Let's just listen to what it's saying. He told them of much of what had happened recently and encouraged them to get ready for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The youth seemed hard and non-responsive, and as Evan called for people to make a public confession of Christ, they were very reserved. But over a few hours, every person submitted to Christ Jesus. There was no one massive breakthrough that night, but piece by piece, ground was taken from the enemy. As people confessed Christ, and as Roberts kept praying and urging others to respond. Over the next week, things began to move as people responded to the Lord. But the devil came in hard and attacked Roberts. The devil asked him, What need was there for you to come when there were so many ministers already in this area? Satan was trying to tell Roberts that he was unqualified to be part of such a movement. But he overcame the doubter and continued in the work. By the end of the week, people were talking of the revival in their daily lives. Numbers were growing and people began to seek God for more. Soon revival was spreading around Wales and many people were being used by God. It was especially evident that women were playing important roles during the revival, which was unusual for that time. For Evan Roberts, he was invited to speak in many places. His style was unorthodox. Sometimes he would pray behind the pulpit or weep as he sought God. At times he would move in spiritual gifts, speaking directly into people's lives, even though this was uncommon and misunderstood at the time. Some called him a mind reader, others a leader of a false emotional revival. Often he would lead the people to pray, bend the church and save the world. I mean, I, I wrote some words down, you know, primarily it was young people, it was unorthodox. They were accused of false emotion and religion. There was women in leadership, informality, and he often didn't even have a sermon. That is very I true. Mean, we'd say, well, you know, God couldn't possibly use such a situation like that. We have this kind of mindset about how God is going to do things. Mm -hmm. But that 1904 revival seems to break almost every one of them. Oh, it's very true. Uh, revivals, like I said, God is sovereign, and he can do what he wants. And we have to be very careful that we don't have God in a box, a box of our preconceived ideas. Revival is so completely unorthodox, and it does shake the tradition. It shakes the system. It's interesting with Evan Roberts. For 13 years, he had a burden for revival, an intense burden, and it nearly broke him. And for several months preceding the outbreak of the revival on the 31st of October, 1904, he had divine encounters with God into the early hours of the morning. Literally, he'll be taken up into the heavens, so to speak, where he had extreme communion and fellowship with God. Though that's um, very unusual. But we read that in the Bible. We read that about the Apostle Paul. He was taken up into the third heavens and saw things which he didn't speak about. How old was he when that uh, happened? Everyone was, I believe he was 26 or 27, so really a young man. 
That's right. I mean, he, he, he was young and, and the others with him, but he, he wasn't actually allowed into the pulpit, if I remember right. And, and he, it had to be an after, the minister said, you can have an after church meeting. That is correct. That's why it broke out in the schoolroom. There were just 17 people present, and it was after the meeting, and it was just for the youth. And he literally locked them in and said, Lord, send the Holy Spirit now for Jesus' sake. Once again, focus is on Jesus Christ. The focus is on the cross.